Okay, this one is coming in hot. GitHub just announced the public beta of a long-awaited feature, Required Workflows. Let's jump in and see how they work. Hey y'all, I'm Mickey Gousset, and in today's video, we are talking about a feature all of my customers have been asking for, required workflows. Required workflows are exactly what they sound like, workflows that you can require all repositories or specific repositories to run against your pull requests. This allows you to define and enforce standard CI-CD practices across your repositories. For example, performing security scans before code is pushed to a default branch. Now, required workflows are configured at the organizational level by organizational admins and are triggered as required status checks for all pull requests open against the default branch, which will block the ability to merge the pull request until the required workflow succeeds. Now, there are some caveats to using required workflows and how they work. I won't go into them much in this video, but instead I'll have links to the documentation below with all the details. Okay, let's get to it. So let's look at a basic example of using required workflows. First thing I need to do is create a couple of workflows that I want to be required. So I've created a new repo, I've called it required-workflows. And in that repository, I've created two workflow files. Now, if you read the documentation on required workflows, they don't have to be stored in .github slash workflows. So I can actually store them in any folder structure I want to, but I put them in .github.workflows because it makes it easier for testing purposes. And I've created two workflow files. The first one is called auto pass. Now auto pass is simply triggers on either workflow dispatch, so I can run it manually, but it also triggers on pull request to the main branch. Now this is important because a required workflow has to have a trigger that is a required workflow trigger. And right now the only trigger that re a required workflow can have is pull request. I just put workflow dispatch for it so I could run the workflow when I wanted to test it. So I'm triggering on a pull request to the main branch and all I'm doing is doing an exit code of zero, which returns true. So this workflow will pass by the same token, my auto fail, same thing triggers on pull request to the main branch and it doesn't an exit one, which will make this workflow fail. So I have two workflow files, the auto fail, and the auto pass. Now, one thing I have to do in this repository in order to use these as required workflows is I need to go into settings and I need to go to actions and go to general. And if you scroll down, I need to specify the access that's available. By default, the access will be not accessible, which means that no other repository can access these workflows which means you can't use it as a required workflow. So I changed it to be accessible from repositories within my organization. So you need to make sure you make that change, otherwise you won't be able to set these workflows as required workflows. All right, now I have another repository. In this case, my demo repository. And in my demo repository, just because I built a workflow that's just a PR workflow. Has nothing to be able to do with being a required workflow or not. It's just a awesome build workflow that runs. That again, it triggers on a branch domain and it does an exit code of zero. So in my repository itself, I have a regular old everyday workflow that's going to run when I create a pull request. Now what I want to do in addition to this one running when I create a pull request is I want to run my auto pass workflow that I showed you from the other repository. And I want to run it as a required workflow. So to do that, I go to 
my organizational level and I go to settings and I go to actions and I go to general. And if you scroll down to the bottom, there's a required workflow section. So I'm gonna click add workflow. Now, the first thing you do is select the repository that has the workflows that you want to add as a required workflow. So in this case, it's my required workflows repository. And then you specify the path to the workflow file that you want. So mine are in .github workflows and I want auto pass. And then I can either apply this to all repositories or I can say this only applies to select repositories. And I'm gonna say select repositories and I'm just gonna apply it to my demo repo. And I'm gonna click add workflow. So at this point, I've created a required workflow that targets just my demo repository. So if we come back over to my demo repository and we make a code change, so we'll make a change and we'll say YouTube. And I'm going to create a new branch. We'll call this branch if you say slash YouTube. And this will be updated readme. I'm going to click Propose Change to create a pull request. And I will create a pull request. And what we're going to see in this pull request is there's the auto pass, which is required. And then there's the workflow that's in this repo that also triggers on a, on a pull request. And it's not required because I didn't make it required through a branch protection rule, so it's just not required. But you can see that the auto pass was required and it passed successfully. So now I could merge my pull request. I can also click in and see the details of that job and it will show me the details of what that workflow was doing. If I go back to my actions tab, I can see here my required workflows are auto pass. So I have a required workflow called auto pass. It's been assigned to this repo and I can click that to see the different times that it's run and here's the where we ran it and we can see the details of the run. So let's go back up to our organizational level settings. Let's add a workflow file. And we'll go back to our required workflows. And in this case, I want to add the auto fail. So this workflow is going to automatically fail. And I will I'll only assign it to my demo repository. And I will add that workflow. And now you can see we have two workflows, auto pass and auto fail that are assigned to the repository. If we go back to the repository and go to the actions tab, it doesn't show up yet. Auto pass is there, but auto fail isn't. Why not? Well, that's because we haven't done anything to initially trigger it. Once it's been triggered once, it will then show up on your actions tab under the required workflows. So let's go back to our code. Let's change to our branch, YouTube. Let's make another change. I should fail. We'll give it a commit message of failing commit directly to the branch. And because we have an open pull request, that will immediately re-trigger all of the checks on there. And you can see now we have the auto fail and the auto pass, as well as my local workflow. So we'll wait a moment to see what happens with those. And what should happen is my local one will pass, auto pass will pass, but auto fail fails as we expected. And because it is a required workflow, it's an organizational level required workflow, I can't override. If this was a normal workflow that was required through branch protection rules, then as an administrator, I can override and still merge, but I don't have that capability now. 
So what that organizational level workflow allows you to do is make sure that certain things, maybe dependency scanning, maybe some kind of security scan, happens before code can be moved from a branch to the default branch. I hope you've enjoyed this video on the recently announced public beta of required workflows. If so, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and smash that bell to be notified of my next video. Thanks for watching.